Hello, adventurers. Welcome back. I see you have your pack and a fine sword at your side. Ready to set out to visit our friends in Garnet Keep, no doubt. Well, let's not keep them waiting. Where is it, you ask? Well, only a few moments in the east, where the sun rises out of your fondest wishes and deepest dreams. Oh, uh, can you take this note with you? It's a letter of thanks to our supporters and patrons. Include the knights and champions of their order. J.D. Rose, Return to Sender, Corey Fouch, Daniel Nichols, Haley Munoz, Brian Dowling, Storm Cone, Jolene Fresquez, Delaney Flanagan, and Rory Christensen. And many more of their shield brothers and sisters are in the show notes. <laughs> Please help me spread the word that others can join us supporting all our shows at Goodham Productions. Mmm, now that's some good ham. Thank you, my friend. Now up. Uh, there. <laughs> now off you go. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait. It, it, it's best you know before you ride off that you are heading into a calm before storms. Uh, that dangerous time where the blades of the future and wisdom to use them are forged. The Dark Army has gone very quiet, which... Well, it can't be good after the great battle of Garnet Keep last season, but um, it hopefully has bought us some time. Time to regroup and plan our next action. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. You, you must get going as time is not in our favor, and we need you to join them on the front line. Now, Godspeed. Dawn of Dragons, Season 5, Episode 1, Heartstones. The noon sun was welcome as it graced the cheeks of those walking in the courtyard of Garnet Keep. The smell of the afternoon bread baking in the kitchens drifted on the mountain breeze. Soft, faintly aromatic herbs like lavender and sage mixed with the nearby pines around the lake just behind the walls. The sounds of the day were lively and welcoming. People bustled around and engaged in conversation as they passed by. They did so with smiles. In many cases, greeting each other as old friends. Dabria found herself looking at the temple to the Night Lord. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I'd probably get in trouble asking you some questions. But... Her hand went to the single goat's horn that hung around her neck. She felt the ridges that led to its singular point and could remember so many years ago when it first found her hand. She remembered that day when she was about 15. She had fought with another young officer in the mess hall. <laughs> What's she doing? Yeah, <laughs> hey, you ain't gonna eat that, so give it here. <laughs> now, stop. <laughs> I said now! Hey, uh, give it to him. Uh, no! <laughs> 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 Your place, girl. <laughs> Oh. 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 Oh no. No. No, no, no. Hey, help. No. Dabria woke with her head throbbing. But more important <laughs> was the pain in her knees and at the small of her back. A matching pain. 
She felt the weight of her limp body, which had wedged itself upright in the narrow tube of coarse stone she was surrounded by. Her eyes opened sharply, her hands grasping for any clue as to where she was, only to be enveloped in darkness, a darkness only broken by a grate just outside of her reach. Realization set in like a hot wave. The... the oubliette. No. But... (laughs) To forget. That's what this place was for. The singular tubes scattered about the floor of the lowest dungeon would take those who were troublesome and forget about them for a while. Topped with a cold forged grate, they would not allow spell work or the Fae to pass, as well as any physical escape. She felt doomed. Dabria felt around for something, anything, that could give some comfort, she supposed. Knowing that there wouldn't be, she was suddenly surprised. What? What what are you? (laughs) She found what appeared to be a single goat's horn, or the end of a ram's horn, she was unsure, stuck on a small ledge of stone just behind her head. She wondered if it fell through the grate at some point, or maybe something worse. She shuddered slightly and focused on the new object in her hand, (laughs) clutching to what she was picturing as her remaining sanity. Thank you. But, yeah, who am I kidding? (laughs) You, you probably don't want to. And why is that? Oh, uh, hi, hey, um, hey, Zorin. Hey. I, uh, I found this back in Inrook. Zorin produced a small, neat, and well-maintained journal from his cloak. Davria's heart sank as her eyes grew wide. My, my journal? Did, did you read this? Well, I, <laughs> I had to find out it was yours, right? <sighs> yeah, sure. Let's walk over to the grotto. Sure, sure, I guess. The grotto was a 20-foot area under the southeast walkway that led from the keep to the parapet and was level with the third floor. The water was channeled inside to create a small water garden and a nice place to launch boats from. Zorin also remarked it was a great place to relax and collect one's thoughts. So, just to be sure, you aren't gonna kill me, right? (sighs) It's that little girl. She just stares at me, then disappears. I can feel the daggers in me before I even notice her. Who? The quiet one. The the one with the markings on her face. Ah, (laughs) you mean Eddie. She's okay. I don't think she'll hurt you. I mean, she's only trying to... (sighs) That's not what I'm saying, and you know it. (laughs) I thought you said you read this book. (laughs) You know, I think I just... I need to go. It's clear that I'm not welcome. And it just would be best if Una and I... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. You helped us come so far, and you are part of the team. Right? We can have a talk to Eddie and... No. I don't want her to know. I... I can tell she wants me dead. <laughs> Wait a second here. So the tough and cruel Mistress of Pain, the feared and respected centurion of the Dark Army is scared of a little girl that she could hurt you? (laughs) I know you don't plan to hurt her, so... Zorin looked at Dabria suddenly, remembering her story from the Celestine Tower and later in the journal entry, talking about her and Cardolan raiding the small island. The same small island Mirak spoke of. 
where he and Eddie came from as sole survivors. His eyes grew wide in sudden understanding. No, Zorin. I'm scared I already have. You are an idiot. Not denying that. And a jerk. Yeah, that too. And you smell. Yeah, thanks. The two chosen and unlikely siblings sat in the meat hall together at the bar. Sophie, the human fighter, and Scott Muir, the dwarven berserker, sat side by side as they stared forward at the rows of bottles, not looking at each other while they spoke, taking time to choose their words carefully. They took only small breaks to take a needed drink from the amber and blackhorn mugs. The cold, frothy mead was welcome, although they hadn't said it yet. So was the company. I... I just really wanted the chance to tell you that. Were you rehearsing it long? It's pretty good, actually. Yep. Weeks. Yep. Deserved that, too. Uh, Feel better? Yep. Great. So, your brother Thoughtmere stayed back at the Great Mine, eh? Yeah. Father isn't doing well, and the family needs help. Sorry to hear that. It's okay. He's really old and set in his ways. Not to mention, this is where I belong. Of course. This is your family, right? What? Uh, Vash? Oh, hey, a bromigo. Hey, Scott Muir. The tall, dark-haired man stepped forward to clasp Scott Muir's wrist in a warm greeting, and both had smiles on their faces. They hadn't seen each other since they rode through the silver maple woods in the back of Vash's wine cart together. Sophie laughed at the fond memory. <laughs> Good to see you, Vash. Wine business still going strong? You bet, Sophie. My pals just finished up the last of the current run, so I'll be staying here for a few days, helping out in the kitchen and more likely around the bar since Lamprey went back to Bell's. Well, it's good to have you here. Let's grab you a horn of mead. Now, that's the best idea I've heard all day. On the fifth floor of the keep were the halls where their library and records were kept. Enchantment by ancient magic and a fortunate location to the rear of the keep aided in protection from the fire shortly after Cordelia was born. Furthermore, a hidden singular access from the third floor up, a narrow winding stairway of wood planks, was the only way to enter this level of the tall keep, locked away as an extension of the ivory library. Hmm. This is a wonderful collection you have, Cordelia. Though surprisingly, not as many books on the flame as I expected coming from you. Oh, I need more, to be sure. I haven't had much time to rebuild these shelves since we got back, honestly. Oh, I merely jest. I know you inherited these from, well, the previous stewardship. I'm... I'm sorry. Oh, I... uh, I know you didn't mean anything, Arya. I mean, I miss them, sure. Every day. But I like to think they are at rest now. Hmm. Yes, yes. The power of memory can bring them back to life, right? Hold on to those. And so, how did you find this place again? Oh, that... It was in here. She motioned to the dark square patch of lines on her wrist. As his eyes focused, he saw the shape of a book with heart and shield emblazoned on it. Ha! Of course. Your mother's spell book. <laughs> ah. Here we are. The Hearthstones. One of which was familiar to you, correct? The green one. (laughs) Come, let us explore and discuss. (laughs) 
They were congregating in the familiar war room on the third floor of the keep. The red granite was illuminated with the tin oil sconces that were part of the wall, as well as by the fire in the great fireplace. Lions graced the edges of the mantle, with the profile of a knight's helm in the center turned to look towards the window and out over the courtyard. So, five hearthstones then. One for each of the five chromatic dragons, correct, Kagiris? That's what I heard as well. Ariet, there's no hearthstone for our metallic colors, is there? No. Huh. Were one to exist, I would have used it against you when you were but wormlings in my glasses. Ymir, you would have loved that. Oh, that almost sounded like a joke for you, sister. Growing tired of being little Miss Sirius? Or did you hit your head harder in that fall than we remember? <laughs> I suppose. I'm feeling a touch better. Thank you for asking. I know it's hard for you. The twins' exchange of jabs lightened up the room, which was a welcome change from the discussion of their next move. Simri's attitude had changed slightly since she and Benedict crossed enemy lines together. She would allow her stone-like stoic demeanor to crack periodically now, showing a glimmer of what could be considered humanity, though she and the rest of the dragons were anything but. The pause in conversation allowed the smell of pine from outside to mix with the fireplace and the rich oils and the wood of the central table to reach their nose, sweet and spicy like nutmeg and apple cider. Upon the table, they poured over a map. Regions were painted in soft pastel colors that had no natural meaning other than to help the eye focus amongst the vast regions of the known world. Well, I, I suppose we have to find these first. After all, we've got to collect them all. Yes, the heartstones are fragments of the original stone. The world forged itself. Not much is written about them, only that they exist and the knights forming had something to do with protecting them. Though how remains a secret. At this point, I'm open to any ideas. Around the central table stood Sophie, Scottmere, the dragons in human form, and their partners. Well, save one. There's the brass Kogiris, one hand on his jaw and thought. The braids from the corners of his mouth pinned by a single finger. And the quiet, secretive Una, wrapping herself up in her black robes, leaning on a long spear. Ariat was wrapped in the ivory robes he favored, leaning on a twisted oak staff next to the raven-haired Cordelia. The night and day duality of the bronze twins, Semri and Emir, matched with the light and dark holy forces of Benedict and the currently missing Dabria. Chikara, you just gotta think there's more secrets there. Seems like a good place to look. Agreed. The Jakarans are very secretive. It's what honestly kept us veiled for so long. We don't bother them, and they don't bother us. Yet. They are the descendants of the Eagle, after all. The ones who started the War of the Stone in the first place. Maybe that's the thought, though. If it was the army that created the knighthood that hid the heartstones, we could look into Darkovnia with the barons. The barons? Why? Their little stranglehold on the world is within the shops and taverns. It's true. The problem is, I doubt any of the knights know where they are. Cordelia proved Lord Alvar and the rest are generations from even knowing half of the secrets in the Celestine Tower alone. Merchants, on the other hand, depend on bookkeeping and records. It would make sense that retaining the location of powerful objects would be in their best interest. Merchants and politicians, eh? I'd rather go for a stand-up fight any day over that. They make the arena seem tame. What about you, Scottmere? 
I want to visit my cousin in the volcano forges of Bloodwood. Something tells me bringing them into this battle could really help turn this around. But... But it's on the other side of the world. Yeah. If we are going to the old country, we should look to the north. The lost people up there may be able to assist if they ever stepped outside of their frozen cities. Ymir brings up a good point. The Silver Dragons of Viridian and the White Dragons of the North had made a pact in their war against the giants centuries ago. I wonder how they're faring now. Arenel's family may still be back in the old country. They, they could make powerful allies. The White Dragons? But aren't they evil? Sure, they're evil, but <laughs> haven't seen them join Lord Palace yet, correct? Yes. Could be an opportunity to get them to continue to stay out of the war altogether. After all, that is an even more powerful win. Hmm. Not even having to fight in the first place. Ah. Hello, Zoran. Dabria. Your thoughts would be most welcome on where to go next. Yes. In what I could find in Inrook, the army is looking for something here. The Shattered Lands? Almost. It's a place called the Nether Spring. I sent an expedition there shortly before the battle to investigate, but I haven't heard anything since. That makes the most sense for the first move. I will go. Who's with me? Dark sister, but we must go to Stroth. She tells me that- No. I'm sorry, Una, but there's no way that we are ready for that yet. Yes, Dabria. I... I will be patient. We can't travel that far north, I'm afraid. Correct. Our wings will freeze in the air. It can get more difficult and possibly dangerous to all of us. We can take you as far as these, the Whispering Woods. From there, you can travel north. Blaze and the other dragons won't miss the opportunity to attack the keep if we are gone as well. We will need to stay in a group as much as possible. Benedict, you don't all plan to go, do you? No, we shouldn't all go. We should send a scouting party to seek them out and investigate. We need three. Oh. Wow. I, I appreciate everyone's enthusiasm. Okay, then. Uh, Cordelia, Scottmir, and, of course, Dabria. You will leave in the morning with Ariat and Emir. Now, you all should get some rest. I need to meet with Keldor about our decision. Appearing in this episode, Ariat, Daniel Nichols, Benedict, Brian Dowling, Semri, Melissa Kirsch, Cordelia, Jolene Fresquez, Dabria, J.D. Rose, Guard, Patrick Kramer, Kogiris, David Tilstra, Young Officer, Patrick Mendelson, Scottmere, Colton Jansen, Sophie, Sarah Jenkins, Una, Becky Atchley, Vash, Barrett Giant, Emir, Harlan Guthrie, Brassler, Nikki Richardson, Zorin, Cody Miller, Keldor, the narrator, Mike Atchley. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Dice Tower Theater's Dawn of Dragons. Please join us in thanking our magnificent cast for their performance, and their full list can be found in the show notes. If you'd like a sticker from the show, please leave a review on any podcasting platform and send a screenshot to dm at dicetowertheater.com with a mailing address that we can send it to. In the next episode, what will Dabria, Cordelia, and Scottmere find in the ancient skull of the Nether Spring. What dangers does it hold? And more importantly, who will wield them? Until then, fellow adventurers, stay safe and remember the oath. <laughs>